Canada's new emissions reduction plan focuses in on emissions from buildings, transportation, oil and gas, and the electricity grid as it attempts to flesh out a plan to get to net zero emissions by 2050. My name is Benu Jakumar. I'm the Director for Clean Energy at the Pemina Institute. I work on decarbonizing our electricity grid in Canada and seeing how our grid can support the electrification of other end users like transport and buildings. This is a turning point for climate action in Canada. It's the first time that we have a detailed plan on how we get to 40% emission reductions from 2005 uh, by 2030. And uh, this plan is actually required under our Net Zero Emissions Accountability Act. Jake Amar works on electricity policy. And as we've learned previously, electricity production will need to double to power new electric vehicles and electrify home heating and industrial processes. One of the policies that I'm very excited about is the clean electricity standard. And that policy is really what's going to drive decarbonization in our electricity sector over the next couple of decades. We don't know how this will work yet, but clean electricity standards usually prescribe that a certain percentage of electricity comes from clean energy sources. It's going to be published by the end of this year. What we should be seeing is a standard that is stringent enough that it discourages investment in any emitting technology that does not have carbon capture attached to it. It's not very sexy, but Jacobar says one of the cheapest options to reduce electricity emissions is to expand electricity transmission between jurisdictions. And the reason is actually quite intuitive. Transmission allows you to build renewables, which are the cheapest form of electricity generation, in the areas that have the best renewable resources. And it allows these jurisdictions also to connect to store, uh, storage uh, in the form of hydropower in provinces like Manitoba, Quebec, or BC. For example, this means Alberta could exploit its amazing solar and wind power resources and store that energy in dams in BC. But differences in provincial markets and regulations make this difficult. Electricity in Canada is a provincial jurisdiction. And so you have electricity that has very different markets in different provinces, and these markets need to be able to work together. This is preventing the grid modernization needed to exploit smart technologies, energy storage, and to integrate electric vehicles into the grid of the future. In Alberta, for example, we don't have time of use pricing. So there is nothing that incentivizes me to charge my electric vehicle at nighttime when there is not much load in the grid. If prices were cheaper at nighttime, I would for sure be charging my car in the nighttime, right? So I think some of these basic, basic market rules and policies need to change to catch up uh, to the wave of electrification that's coming. And it's coming fast. The urgency to modernize the grid is underlined by parallel goals to accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles. So we've got a mandate for new light duty vehicle sales to be fully zero emission by 2035. But the government has actually set uh, itself some intermediate targets also, you know, 20% by 2026, 60% by 2030. These are good intermediate targets to set. We've zeroed in on the measures designed to get the Canadian electricity grid to net zero by 2035. With the massive changes already underway, Jacobar says she'd also like to see much more attention paid to providing supports to workers who are transitioning out of sunsetting industries and toward ensuring greater diversity in the new industries. Learn more at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.